Ever been inside a factory that is fully automated making complete concrete wall panel systems with some of the highest technology you'll ever see around the world? Well, come inside this place because right now we are getting ready to go in there and look at it. And to give us the grand tour, I am standing here with Bernhard Leitner from Progress Group, Green Code. Let's go inside. Yeah, let's head up. All right, Bernhard, we're inside the factory. You know, where are we starting here and what are you gonna show us? So this is the start and end of the process. Uh, since it's a cir circulation line, this is the end of the process where all the products are being demolded and then put out for transport on transport stacks and then racks, automatic cleaning, uh, oiling, and then the process starts again anew. So on this right side is the end of the process going out. On the left side is the beginning of the process. Yes, that's correct. Also on the outgoing process is the polishing machine. machine. Yeah, this is what you see on the other side over there. We have certain elements which are treated uh, specially, which are polished or hammered, or they want to have a different surface texture. And this is the machine that you see over there where certain elements are being done. This is a special element that we can see now. This is polished with black marble aggregates and black pigments inside, giving it a very dark sheen. Right, right. And that's a big structural column for this, this in particular a, project, right? This is a big structural column, yes. But we can also do that with wall panels or anything else? Anything that uh, the client wants can be polished here, as long as it needs to be. It's a flat polishing uh, machine, so anything to a width of two and a half meters can be polished and grind it out quite smoothly. Yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. All right, let's talk about step number one. And it's going to be starting in a second. Demolded pallet is cleaned and automatically oiled. So to make sure that nothing, no concrete can stick on it, and it will move on to the first station where the robot places the shuttering for the next elements. Uh, aside from the shuttering, he can also place magnets for electrical boxes and furthermore, uh, plot on things where the manual labor is then done. So, shuttering, right? We're talking about the, the steel reinforcement. No, the shuttering is the end place of the, where the concrete is slips. Uh, each pallet, the production table, has two fixed shutterings on, yes. on two sides, and then the individual element is being done with uh, individual shutterings, which are in the storage area behind the robot. And the pallets themselves, as we go through this process, we're gonna see different uh, uses for the pallet, and not all the pallets are always full of concrete. No, uh, we generally try to get the pallet occupancy rating of around 60%. This is the sweet spot so, yeah. uh, in terms also what the worker can do or the machines can do. The thing is that it really depends on the project or project mix that we are currently running yeah. or running at the current time makes the pallet occupancy. Right. So we have the clean pallet that's oiled down, we got the shutters on that mark exactly where the concrete's gonna be laid. What's step two then? The step, step two, we have two what we call buffer stations. They are here on the right. These two buffer stations if are for manual add-on work. I've talked before about the acoustic climatic ceiling and uh, uh, those difficult elements. Yes. Here we have two stations where we can do some manual labor and manual work on. In the case that there is more manual labor, we get additional personnel, the, a jumper, in doing the work. Otherwise, there is just one person overseeing all those stations that are around me. And everything, uh, he has to keep everything in mind. Uh, keep the machines running if there is an error or something that needs to be changed he needs to do this and he needs to place additional shuttering so uh, in some cases uh, especially if you have angled elements yeah. not uh, there is not a perfect shuttering you cannot close it automatically so then you have to put a polystyrol strip there and uh, uh, finish the shuttering over there. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to watch these robots come in and lay the magnets and marking the, the whole thing. But like you said, there are still some manual processes depending on the customization of a particular yes. job that maybe is not worth building into the robot. The limitation right. of automation is always the, the robot. You yeah. can automize everything, but sure. uh, it's easier and you need some manual labor you will need uh, right. all the time. Uh, meaning that you have to control the process, you have to have somebody supervising it and uh, right. this is done by a person. Excellent, so we have step one, step two with the robots, put on the magnets, then where are we headed? 
Then we're moving up to the next station once the shuttering and all the insert parts are being done. Okay. Then we're moving to the next automatic station. In this station, the distancers are placed. Right, and the right thickness. The right thickness, yes. Yeah, perfect. Well, let's go check that out down here and we'll... Uh, we'll just move on. So there's a whole lot of technology happening here. You said there's six people that run the entire yes. manufacturing process. Uh, currently on the shop floor, there are six people running in this uh, side of the factory. We have another factory or another circulation line on the other side. Okay. There are eight people uh, working and then the overall staff like maintenance uh, and right. stuff like that. But productively working here are six people. So back over here, we had the shuttering done and some of the custom hand work that had to happen. Yes. And then it comes over to this station. This is an automated station. In this station, as I said before, the distancers are being placed. So the robot picks up the right distancers in height and then places it automatically on the pallet. You might think that this is work which can be done by labor. Labor or it's very easy manual work. But here it's mistaken. Uh, any laborer would just place in uh, as much uh, distances as he thinks are yeah. fit. And here you can actually save resources, you save time by only putting the right amount of distances which are required. Right, so the robot does that. And then those spacers are there because there's something going on top of them. Yes, this is then the next station, the, uh, the pallet after the- Comes across, uh, comes towards, across us. towards us. And here the individual meshes are being placed. So we have a just-in-time production of the meshes. Yep. And the meshes are really individual meshes. Meshes with different diameters, right. different lengths and thicknesses. Even with different shapes, we can bend up the meshes to right. create cages. And these are produced just in time. And then with this magnet traverse placed at, this, uh, at the right time in the element. That's amazing. So the magnet picks it up and then demagnetizes where it yes. needs to set it. Yes. And it's precisely where it needs to be. Yes, precisely where it needs to be. And then, so from this position, we have the spacers in, we have the wire mesh in. Are we getting close to putting the concrete in yet? No, there are still two more stations that we uh, have to look at and uh, we're just gonna look at them now. Okay, let's go see those. As we're walking over there, it's getting noisier. I'm seeing sparks flying. Where, where are we headed? We are heading now to the girder machine, to the automated girder machine. I think that we are going to have a look, uh, quickly have a look over there. So we are now moving up to the automated girder machine. What do we have here to the right turn? And that looks like rebar coils. These are rebar coils. So we currently have four rebar coils with different diameters and we can automatically change the rebar and, the and the machine. And the machine. Yes. Yep. All right. So we're gonna have to talk a little louder because it's getting, you know, it's getting, getting loud noisy. in here. So the machine that you see behind us, uh, it's called a Versa. It's an automated girder machine. It produces this steel girder and it can change the height, the thickness of wire and automatically. So there is no manual alteration that right. you need to do. And uh, it is produced just in time, cut to length and then transported by a robot downstairs. So this is bringing in the wire corals and rebar and this is welding it right yeah. now. We have something that you don't see uh, behind there. It's uh, the, yeah. the, the, from the coils, it's first straighted. Uh, straighten and then fed into here and then here there's the welding process then right. there is a cut and probably I'm not sure we would need to stand here and wait for the next pallet right it will have a change now in the height and then we will start uh, continuously production onwards so these coils of rebar that everybody sees you know that you can't bend by hand they come wrapped around a coil and as they unwrap they go through a straightening process come into this machine and then are straight to be processed on and straight to be processed on that's pretty awesome all right so and this is making the girder what is the purpose of a girder the purpose of the girder we use it in most of our products in a double wall it's to connect the two sleeves together yeah the half slab is just to give it strength in terms of the bending through right. and in the thermal wall and the insulated panel it is also to give it rigidity in in terms when you're standing up right. It's a Fachwerk, uh, the German term. Fachwerk. Fachwerk. Yeah. Uh, it's the shape. Right. It's called Fachwerk. Yep. So that's going to get set on the pallets we just saw coming through, right? Yes. That's part of the process because it's happening in real time. That's going to set down, and then the pallets move into the next process, 
right? And this is all setting up for the first concrete pour, but that's also part of the second pour. In the second pour, only the top layer will be in the concrete, in the concrete of, yeah. the, of the second pour, right. and uh, then connecting the two shelves together. Process-wise, this machine cuts it to length, and it's then with an elevator br brought down because we're on a right. mezzanine level and then a robot picks it up and places it into the pallet. And it's all just automated, it happens. Everything, you don't see any worker here, uh, only if there is an error, right, they come in. Should, uh, would come in, or if there's some maintenance to be done or some checks to be done, right. otherwise there is no uh, personnel here. I love it. All right, so this is the next station. Where are we going now? I think we go to the automated mesh welding because this is what we saw before. Uh, picked up and being placed in the pallet. The mesh welding machine is just on the upside of here. We're just gonna head over there. Perfect, perfect, so let's do that.